Here's the thing, Charles. It's not a dream if it's real. XO, the X-Men, year one, the dream. X1, the X-Men, year 10, the world. X2, the X-Men, year 100, the war. X3, the X-Men, year 1000, ascension. XO, the X-Men, year one. Good afternoon. And the same to you. Are you enjoying the fair? It seems like the kind of thing I should enjoy. And yet, I look around at all these people and know it's just a show for those who need one. A distraction from what's really going on, if you will. Mind if I sit? Please. So, are you enjoying the fair? I am. It seems like the kind of thing I should not enjoy. And yet, a little parting of the clouds... A little shining of the sun. And suddenly, everything seems right in the world. Having a good day, are we? <laughs> Is it that obvious? You'd have to be blind not to notice. In my case, I was just walking through the fair. Past the caged beasts and the games of chance. Past the fortune teller selling his wares. Say the magician, the metal metamorph, the great sword and the girl with one foot and two worlds. See the tower, the axis, the pillar of collapse and rebirth the monolith of ascension. See the devil, the red god and the lost cardinal of the last religion. Then, at the far end of the fair, I saw you sitting there, and I thought to myself, there he is, what I've been looking for, the strong man. <laughs> I'm not really that strong. And I wondered why, sitting there under parted skies and brilliant sun, was this strong man smiling so? I was, wasn't I? Yes. Do you want to know why? I do. Very much so. I was smiling because I have recently had the most wonderful dream of a better world and my place in it. Well, here's the thing, Charles. It's not a dream if it's real. <sighs> I'm sorry. Do we know one another? Oh, yes. We go back quite a ways. Who are you? Why don't you read my mind, Charles? Read my mind and see. Ah. Chapter 2 The Last Dream of Professor X X-1 The X-Men Year 10 Krakoa Go play, Toad. The House of M. Ah, you're back. Good. So tell me, have you noticed the effect this place is having? Almost overnight, it seems Krakoa has become a wellspring of hope. A home of dreamers and true believers. Even I, one so shaped by the cruelty of this world that any skepticism would seem well-earned, find myself infected with the idea of it. Tell me, Mystique, do I dare dream of success? We lost Sabretooth, and he did us no favors when he killed several guards. But yes, Magneto, I have it. Well done. But I have demands. Do you now? Is helping your fellow mutant not reward enough for Raven Darkholm? No, it isn't. I need more. Yes, I see that. But it's fair, I suppose. We have further demands as well. Really? I'm afraid so. Is helping your fellow mutant not reward enough for the great Charles Xavier? We're building a better mutant world, Mystique. And everyone who would live in it owes something. X2, the X-Men, year 100. There was a dream. 
Our dreams are the same. While you slept, the world changed. Northern Territory, the Nexus. This one's dying. Dear, I hope for something salvageable from its mind. Or should I set my expectations more toward the human end of the spectrum? Bad news on that front. Of course. They're wiping on termination now. Some kind of mnemonic trigger when they start to flatline. And the other mutant. We know her. Silovel was born in the kennel. Red is a black brain telepath. A natural Judas, subversion was written into her DNA. Normal field protocol is sure to fail. We'll have to give her a bath. Oh, let's not give up so easily, shall we? Where's that human ingenuity you're always going on about? Maybe its current misfortune is making it feel conversational. Does that sound right to you, mutant? Tell us! What did you and your friends find rifling through the Nexus? And where, oh, where did they run off to? What... friends... I see. So you'll be needing persuasion, then. Hold on, sister. I've worked too hard to find you, just to lose you now. No! Don't you dare! Once I had no name, because I was born without one. How much blood did I have on my hands before you saved me? Before you named me? All of this was for nothing! If you don't make it back... She's right, Rasputin. This is too important. We have to go. Now. Just because you were bred to be a coward doesn't make me one, Cardinal. If you want to run, then run. I won't be. I'm planting the black seed of Krakoa. I will wait for you as long as I can before I close it on the other side. If you do not come, then I will see you both when the world is made again. Will you pray for me, priest? Of course. My faith is boundless. I pray for all living things. And that's your problem, priest. You've forgotten that machines have no soul. And that the humans lost theirs a long time ago. I want to go home. Then let's do that. I've got her, priest. How soon until the gate is fully grown? It's taken root. Not long. Hold them off. Just a bit longer. I can do that. I was made for it. Nothing's phasing her. Metal or plasma. We need backup. I'm calling in a tank. Gate's open. Let's go. Okay. We're leaving now, sister. Oof! Oof! Got her. <gasps> Rasputin! We're withdrawing with this prisoner. Hunting party, subdue and capture the other one. Oh no. No! No choice now, sister. Leave me behind. Escape! I will die here before I do. Leave, please. No! The Sinister Line, Chimera. The first generation of sinister mutants were uniformly designed to divert copies of a singular DNA source with a pure, uncompromised X gene, commonly referred to as fodder. Inside the breeding pits, these mutant soldiers were trained in the Martian underground until they reached the age of 16, at which time they traveled to Krakoa to defend the mutant nation-state until it fell 30 years later. The second and third generations of sinister mutants were referred to as Chimera class. The second Chimera generation produced mutants that had DNA composed of two separate X genes, resulting in a mutant with the mostly predictable combined power set of the source mutants. The third Chimera generation 
produced mutants with an amalgamated DNA featuring up to 5X genes. Outside of a predictable failure rate, see outliers, this third generation of chimeras was universally successful against the man-machine supremacy, and many believed that this would be the turning point in the war. However, the fourth generation of sinister mutants suffered a systematic failure. The entire batch of these Omega-based Chimera mutants was produced with a corrupted hive mind that was only discovered to be defective after they had destroyed 40% of the remaining mutant population and caused the fall of Krakoa itself. They eventually committed mass suicide, collapsing Mars, the Sinister Pits, and themselves into a self-singularity. Mutant Breeding Program When the population level of mutants reached a crisis point, the constant evasion relocation confrontation cycle made systemic mutant propagation impossible. The remaining mutant leadership endorsed, approved the creation of the sinister breeding pits of Mars. Under the expert hand of chief mutant genesis, Mr. Sinister, this strategy mirrored the Earth-based Sentinel Hound program. But instead of focusing on the interbreeding of mutants with powers that lent themselves to detection, pursuit, and deception, the sinister strategy focused on mutants with power sets that had more aggressive, materialistic traits. These lost years of mutant leadership followed the almost universal death or disappearance of senior leaders and preceding the fall of Krakoa and Mars. Many believed rampant rumors that the lost years were not accidental, but purposeful. See betrayal. Outliers. Like any experiment, Sinister's breeding program would produce results that fell outside the expected range of failure rate. Every generation of mutant chimeras had outliers, but the expectation that these failures would be controllable at worst and acceptable at best. Failure rates per generation. Generation 1, 0.3%. Generation 2, 1.2%. Generation 3, 9.4%. Generation 4, 62.3%. Generation 3 had a 10% failure rate where, in spite of their being bred for war, these mutants developed passive peacetime power sets. Almost all of these outlier mutants also had personality profiles that lent themselves to pathicism and obsession with creation myths. They also rejected the idea of personal identities and refused individual names. These variants were all called cardinal. Betrayal The fall of Krakoa and destruction of the Martian breeding pits was directly preceded by the betrayal of mutants by Mr. Sinister. Retrospectively, it is obvious that Mr. Sinister was playing a longer game of self-interest that superseded any formal association or alliance. And while the failings of the Generation 4 mutants were clearly a design flaw baked into their design, it is now believed that most of the random circumstances that led to the creation of Sinister's program were, in fact, orchestrated by him. The nature of man, Sinister, reaches far beyond any hope of redemption. There can be no salvation for the devil himself. Sinister was publicly executed by the man-machine supremacy after defecting. The Tower of Nimrod the Lesser, the human machine monolith. Look, Omega, it appears as if your faith in humanity has paid off once again. They come bearing gifts. Hmm. Great Nimrod. We seek an audience and require the wisdom of your counsel. Please, there's no need for formalities. We are allies, equals of a kind, and you are always welcome. What do you need, Hunter? Earlier today, we believed that as many as four mutants penetrated the Nexus and accessed the mainframe. We do not know how they gained entry. We do not know how they masked their search and we do not know what they found. At least one escaped, one died, and we captured this one. She once was a hound. And isn't this interesting, Nimrod, from the Salken Kennel? You are looking at the last strain of mutant 
produced through our breeding program. A hound. I see. Give me your eyes, mutant. I want you to look at me when I say this. I am so sorry for what we did to you. In fact, I am embarrassed and ashamed at what we did in the name of both expediency and annihilation. We bred you not only to be a slave, but to betray your own people. How, in a good and just world, did higher functioning programs like ourselves believe that would ever be a good idea? And, speaking personally, I find it encouraging that your litter failed us so miserably. Bad ideas should die a bad death. I find hope in that. And you should too. If it takes a thousand years, I swear, we will endure and erase you from existence. That's the spirit. I love it. Some bad news, though. This will not be that day of days. Today, you will tell us what you were looking for, if you found it, and most of all, why you wanted it. Do you really think I would do that? Of course. People betray their own kind all the time. I can assume standard interrogation protocols failed. We tried. But as you know, she was bred to withstand that. It might not work, but I want to give her a bath. See what comes out in the wash. Yes, 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 yes! Perhaps. The AI is young, still learning. Parsing the data comes without a clear window of recovery. You could learn what you need to tomorrow, or decades from now, when the information is useless. Are you sure? What else are we going to do? Uh, please, let me... Have it your way. Excellent. Prepare the subject. Let go of... Stop! What are you doing? I am so, so sorry for what I'm about to do to you. You see, I've built something. A repository of sorts. A monument to understanding the mutant anomaly. But sometimes, innovation has a biological cost. And when you add to that your... unwillingness to let us know the things we need to... Well... Necessity narrows our options even more. Soon, all of these chambers will be full of your kind, your bodies, and more importantly, your minds will be submerged in femtofluid, where you will all be suspended and distilled down to nothing but data. Curated by an AI of my own making, my very own brood. Unfortunately, for one of mine to flourish, Many of yours must perish, including you. So, as you fade away into nothingness, do try to find it in your heart to forgive me. You think... You think threatening me is going to make me t tell you what you, you want? I'm... I'm not afraid to die for what I believe in. It's... Good that you're willing to die for a cause, though causes have long seemed to be fatal for you people. And unfortunately, while this is a kind of death, it's not one you can escape from. The Kennel Sentinel Mutant Breeding Camps. I'm sorry. I wish I was made some other way. But I'm not. I'm just not capable of violence. If I could trade places with her, I would. You know that, right? She was gone by the time I was done fighting them. Gone. While well, you watched. Right now, I think I would take your trade, priest. We saw that there were only two of you in transit. What happened? Percival's dead. Silobel probably is too. Well, that's too bad. 
they were both good soldiers. Question is, did they die for nothing, or was it worth it? <sighs> We've got it. All right, then follow me. The old man's waiting. Surviving Mutants Total mutant population under the man-machine supremacy. The current estimated number of surviving Homo sapiens superior is currently believed to be less than 10,000. The vast majority of these mutants are transplants, refugees, no longer living on Earth or in their native solar system. Two main colonies, which make up the bulk of the refugees, exist in Shi'ar space. The first, Benevolence, is a converted transit station located on the fringe of Shi'ar space, where it has long served as a buffer between the Empire and the wild space spawning grounds of brood breeding territory. The current number of mutants living in Benevolence is just under 8,000. The second mutant colony is located on the Shi'ar throne world of Shandalar. The less than 2,000 mutants who live here are, by treaty with the Empire, warrior stock for the Imperial Guard. Currently, six mutants serve as Super Guardians and 57 of Super Guardian classification. It has long been whispered in the Imperial circles that the Empress Xandria has always had ambitious plans to annex this solar system, and the mutant guardsmen are being cultivated to be sympathetic conquerors as an emollient for emperor rule. Inside the mutant community, it is hoped that should this come to pass, the surviving mutants can serve as seed stock for repopulation. Soul Mutants All mutants living in the soul system are currently citizens of Asteroid K. After the recent deaths of the ex-hound Silable and the ghost Percival, the current population of Asteroid K is 8. Benevolence Location, Shi'ar Space Population, 7,942 Shandalar Location, Shi'ar Homeworld Population, 1,829 Asteroid K Location, Solar System Population, 8 X3, the X-Men, year 1000 We are losing them the Archive of Nimrod the Greater, the Mutant Library. And there's nothing I can do to prevent it. There's too much machinery floating around inside there, and not enough soul to save, let alone copy. Name is not yours, librarian. It's mine. I simply wasn't built to hold integrity for a millennium. It's no one's fault, Nimrod. You did exactly what you were made to do. You created a collective consciousness of mutantdom, a living database of Homo Superior, in order to provide a technical advantage in war. Who could have known how pointless and useless that war would be? Who, at the time, could have seen the surprising end of the human-machine-mutant war? Homo Sapiens... So good to be done with all that. Are we done with them? Can we ever really be done with the past? After all, that's what a legacy is. The Preserve And it's why we keep dinosaur bones around. As a reminder of what this world used to be like, and to remember what we overcame. It's important to keep a record of the great sins of history. Even better, to preserve a remnant of... Something to point at, and hope to God they never have dominion again. You've forgotten that machines have no soul, and that the humans lost theirs a long time ago.